have tried SIF over the years have often complained that it's hard to set up, maintain, and optimize. In this series, Ceph Easy, we want to show you the current state of things and how easy Ceph has become these days. Today, we will look at the very start of every Ceph journey, the installation, using mostly the web UI. In preparation just with the CLI video, I have prepared three virtual machines, each installed with RHEL 9, subscribed to my Red Hat Network account. I also have a root SSH key that allows me passwordless SSH from demo 1 to demo 2 and demo 3. I have configured the YUM repositories for RHEL and for IBM Storage Ceph. And I also have the host file prepared so that uh, I can easily SSH and reach the other two VMs, demo 2 and demo 3. Right. Um, in order to get started with the web UI, obviously, we need to start it and install it. For that, we need Ceph ADM um, on this command line. So um, that's just one command away. And in order to actually install a web UI and the base services, we would need to use uh, Ceph ADM Bootstrap. So the bootstrap command has many options that allow you to uh, fine tune it and exactly define how you want to install the cluster. But there's actually only one that is mandatory and that is the mon ip command. And that's the IP address of your first monitor node in the Ceph cluster. And so this would be, in our case, our IP address of demo one, because that will be the first monitor node. So let's use that IP address. And then because we're using downstream products, we want to uh, configure the registry. So we use that command line option. And I've already prepared that. This is in, uh, configured in this file. Let's take a quick look. Um, it's configured like this. So this is the IBM repository where we're pulling from. Our username is CP. And then this one is the entitlement key that you can fetch from the, um, from the <laughs> IBM container software library. I'll put a link to that in the description just uh, for... Uh, complete the snake uh, because some people are, aren't aware of this fully. So let's execute our bootstrap command that will install the base services and the first monitor node on your on our local uh, VM. And then we can switch over to the web UI and uh, continue doing things in there. And this is now starting the manager. Uh, the manager is the part of the Ceph cluster that's actually also running our dashboard. All right. And that's that. Now we get us the output uh, URL, uh, user and password. Um, it didn't detect our IP address fully, but we know our IP address. So we can now uh, reach the web UI from there. The first thing you will notice when you connect to that URL is that um, obviously this is a self-signed certificate. You can tune options to provide um, certificates that you have generated yourself with that's encrypt or with your internal uh, CA, but the base installation just creates certificates itself. So we can just ignore these warnings for now. And then we reach the login mask here. And we get the um, the first login information right from the bootstrap command. So um, 
that was the password here. And then we automatically get triggered to set a new password. So uh, this needs to be somewhat secure. So I'm just going to type something here, else it's going to refuse me. And then it triggers you to log in again with the new password. Right, and now we can start in to install the cluster. Now, the first thing we see in here is that the dashboard already triggers us to do two things, basically. To first, in this uh, yellow bar, we uh, are asked to activate the telemetry module. We're not going to do that right now. And we X that, and then we are uh, supposed to expand our cluster. So as you've seen, we now have one VM and we're running just a monitor and the manager module. That is the bare minimum. Nothing else is running here. So obviously we want to add some hosts. So we're going to add Ceph demo two and Ceph demo three. And now uh, the Ceph service is uh, starting to reach out to those nodes and it's going to try to add them to the Ceph cluster and see what kind of uh, services it can run. It already fetches some uh, hardware information here, where they're running on, what kind of CPUs and memory we have available. Now, um, we want to, um, we can create some OSDs and we have a couple of different options that we can use. The cost optimized, all available HDDs are selected. Throughput HDDs are selected for data devices. Um, and IOPS optimized, all available NVMEs are selected. Um, so for our use case, we only have NVMEs. So um, we have three flash devices, one of which is the OS disk, but um, two one gig devices. Um, so we could use either one. I could use IAPS Optimize for this. I'm going to do an encryption. And if you wanted to, you could even do an advanced um, setup where you precisely define which disk is used for what purpose. Obviously, here are only listed the, um, the disks that are actually available. So you can see um, only the 100 gig disks, not the OSDs, because they're in use. We couldn't use them anyways. Um, all right. We're not going to do that. We're going to uh, do this. Next. And we want to create some services. <clears throat> um, No, actually not. That's fine. Expand a cluster. Now this will start to configure the Ceph cluster on the remaining nodes and try to make use of the, the disks. So we should be seeing a couple of OSDs up here. Uh, we already have the OSDs in here. We can see that um, Demo 3 has started the monitor, Demo 2 just uh, started the monitor. So now we have our three monitors that are, are required to uh, run a sane Ceph cluster. We have Demo 1 as the admin node. That means we have the, the admin um, credentials on there. So we could run Ceph CLI commands on there. And we have the manager in HA mode. So Demo 1 and Demo 3 are uh, run that. Uh, for some reason, my OSDs are not coming up. I think because I clicked on advanced uh, before. So let's just go through this again. Create, I use IAPS optimized, create OSDs. Let's see if that um, gets that started. All right, that was much better. So now we have um, our six OSDs, two on each VM, three VMs make six OSDs. They're in and down and now they're starting up. Um, they're marked as flash disks because they're 
uh, NVMe desk on a gigs of usage. And this looks good. Um, this is a much healthier cluster. That's okay. But now we don't have any uh, actual usefulness of this. <laughs> Um, we have a zero object gateways, so no object. We don't have any uh, RVD pools. Uh, we don't have any file systems. Um, so we should get started with that. So first of all, the pod pool. We create a pool, we call it RVD for rate of smart device. And we say it's a replicated pool. We want to replicate it three times, that's fine. PG auto scale is also very good. And now we select the RBD as the application. That's fine. No compression. And we don't have any quotas or QS. That's fine. And now with this RBD pool created, we could just uh, as well go on a CLI, create some Radius block devices. And RBD is the default pool it would uh, look at. So uh, that would just uh, work right away. Uh, we can also go into here and um, create all BDs here. Um, that would work. We could now uh, use this RBD in whatever application, um, like an OpenShift cluster, an OpenStack cluster, whatever you want. Um, all right, let's go over to the object gateway. Um, the object gateway is currently not running. And we, it's our duty to, um, to start that. So let's create a service type um, RGW, Rados gateway. Um, but object and we want to use all hosts count to it's fine now we have size 2 requested size 2 is now running and we go here that is displayed here and now we uh we, we could use the um, object service to create a bucket. Um, and create a bucket. And now um, we could access this object storage as a default S3 object storage via those three hosts um, and start putting objects into our bucket. Um, and then we can observe it in this UI with the use capacity a limit number of objects. And you can see here a lot of information. Um, we configured the users that have access to this over here. We can obviously create users, um, define limits. Um, each user has their S3 key. So um, I can then manage those here. And um, and configure my S3 uh, application to use these credentials to connect to the Rados gateway and use that bucket that we just created. Now there's still no file system, so let's look into that. We go back to services. We create a service. Um, this one is of type. Uh, let me see, MDS, metadata server, um, file test, placement host. We again add our, all our hosts, uh, say two MDSs, that would be one in active mode, one in passive mode, and uh, there it's booting up, and it's ready. Um, so the service is ready now. And now we need to actually create the file service itself. And for that, the easiest way to do that is actually go back to the terminal and issue one command. So we do, um, we install the Ceph common package that gives us access to the Ceph command here. 
and with the ceph command we do ceph fs volume create fs test once we did that we go back to the browser we see this here and now um we can see that uh, this is already hooked up to the, the pools and everything. So it's really as simple as that. Um, we have a strategic overview of the performance down here. Um, and we can see the clients that are connected to our file system, the directories in there, and some more um, performance details um, that are currently not working due to some DNS issues here. All right, and that's in 50 minutes, uh, very verbose how you can install Ceph pretty much um, only with the web UI. And uh, I'll link again to the video how you can install basically just with the CLI. And we're also going to do a little bit more deep dive into the dashboard in another video where we look at this install cluster and what we can now do with the install cluster, um, how we can observe things, how we can see the performance markers and do a, do a, do a little observation there. Mm -hmm.